What's going on everybody, Mike here. Welcome to another Symphony tutorial. Today we're going to talk about the difference between required and allowed condiments. How do we program them and how do we use them? So let's sign in and let's take a look at what we have. I'm going to pick up my check. Here we're in our breakfast area. I'm just going to ring up an American breakfast. For seat position 1. Now you see after I rung up my American breakfast I get a pop-up. This is a require condiment. Require condiments have what we call a min and a max. A minimum value and a maximum value. Mine is set to 1 and 1. So that means that out of all these options here, I need to make a selection and then I only have one choice. We could set it, for example, to 0 and 1. Where if I would hit done, it would let me pass through the screen. But because my minimum is 1, I have to make a selection from here. Enforce this type of condiment when you want your servers to actually push a button, such as meat temperatures, or where you need to know how you prep your eggs. I'm gonna select scrambled. Now, let's take a look at some allowed condiments. Here on the bottom, I have a food prep screen, which I'm gonna open now. And here are all my allowed condiments. At the top, we have these prefixes, like add, no, sub, extra. We also have a do not make, a special button where we basically get a keyboard and we can type in whatever you would like, and also a special in dollar sign if we actually need to upcharge for the condiment as well for a special request. So we can use these in conjunction, all the condiments at the bottom in conjunction with the prefixes at the top. So for example, if somebody would like American cheese in their scrambled eggs, I could just say add American cheese and that would appear on here. The way we usually program these type of condiments is a condiment that is used very often or is absolutely necessary, we program it as a required condiment. A condiment that is only used some of the times, like less than half of the time, then we can program it as an allowed condiment. Now let's take a look at how they are programmed. Let's take a look at the screens first. Under the configuration tab, under the user interface, I'm going to open page design. Now, in page design, I have several pages. I have my sign-in page, a begin checks, transactions, and also a separate condiment screen. Now, your required condiments might be programmed at the bottom in a condiment screen lookup, or they could be a pop-up condiment screen lookup like I have here. If you take a look at this, you're gonna see that it looks just like we saw on the screen. Basically, this will overlay on top of the menu items, and then all the required condiments would appear here in sequence. If you don't have one of these pages, all you have to do is click the insert key here at the top and then select the position where you would like your screen to appear. You can select the next available position or specify a record, give it a name. And then here from the specific template, you want to scroll all the way down to the bottom. And at the bottom, we're going to find this template called pop-up condiment order. That's the one that you need to select in order for the pop-up condiment to work. I'm not going to add that now since I already have one. So those are the required condiments. Let's take a look at my transaction screen and see the allowed condiments. I'm going to change my aspect ratio here to 16 to 9 so it looks like the widescreen on my workstation 6. I'm going to go into the food prep area here. These prefixes at the top are what we call hard-coded buttons. You see, if I grab one from here, it's an individual key linked to a menu item and exactly my condiment that I needed to have it. And it's the same for all of them. This at the bottom, where the actual condiments appear, are a slew or screen lookup. If you see, this is a big block where all the menu items populate. Using a slew is easier for maintenance and you can also use the little letters on the side to filter through your options. If you use hard-coded keys, you're going to have to add and remove each key every time you need to add or remove a modifier. After you programmed your screen, the next thing we have to do is link the modifiers to the menu items. So the menu item knows which items are required and which items are allowed. In that case, you won't have beverages condiments, for example, appear for the food items. 
We're going to do that in menu item classes. Under the configuration tab, under menu items, we have menu item classes. In this module, we're going to find first we have our open menu items, then we have regular food items. These are items that don't require any specific require condiments. And then we have food items that do require specific condiments. These that begin with an R in my example means that this particular menu item class required meat temperatures. You would assign this to any menu item that you need to have a meat temperature assigned to it. This one, for example, is my egg cook style. This is the menu item class that was attached to my American breakfast. So let's open one up and take a look at it. Here under the condiments group is where we link all of our condiments. We basically have three columns. We have the required condiment section, allowed condiment section, and also the memberships. So the first two on the left are the boxes that we check for the menu items and the one to the right is going to be the column with the boxes that we check for the modifiers. So this is where we will tell our system, for example, any menu item that belongs to this particular class will require group number six called egg cooking style. And then if we take a look here at the bottom, if we look in group six here, we will have a modifier group called M egg prep. So modifier group egg cooking style. If I click on this one, you will see this one has a checkbox here on the right hand side under member condiment groups. So all of my modifiers such as scrambled over easy over medium will have this menu item class and all of my food items, meaning American breakfast and everything else will have this menu item class. And the fact that both of them use group six is the way they are linked to each other. Also here in the allowed section is where we would allow all of our food items to allow food modifiers. Now all my food modifiers are all the way at the bottom under here, all mods. So the fact that I have this box checked, it means that this particular class will allow all food modifiers. Another way to program this is to check both boxes. So for example, if you don't have a group that includes all modifiers like I do at the bottom, you will have to check the box here in required and allow and also check the box for any other modifier group that you want to allow. Now, the last section that we're going to take a look at is going to be the force condiment section here at the top. Any group that has the modifier box here checked for required will have this field open as well. And this is where we have the min and the max. So my egg cook style is a one to one. If I would like to allow the servers to ring up two styles of eggs, then I would set it one to two. And now they will be able to push the button twice. Let's take a look at that and see if that worked. First thing we need to do is click a quick update. Sign in. Pick up our check. Just as before, we're going to ring in an American breakfast for seat position one. And I'm going to ring in scrambled and over easy. So because I set that max to number two, now I get two choices. This works great if you have a build your own pizza, build your own sandwich or anything else that you would require multiple condiments. If you are interested in more Symfony tutorials, we have created an entire course where you can learn everything you need to maintain your Oracle Micros POS system. And as a special thank you, I also included a coupon code for you. You can find all the details in the description below. Leave a like if you found this helpful and thanks for watching.